In this video we're going to take a look at a Champion petrol lawnmower I've just picked up, it's got a snap blade and it's been sat in storage for at least three or four years. So let's take a look, replacing this blade, see if we can get this mower running and let's get started right now. If this is your first time on Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit YouTube channel, be sure to hit subscribe and tick the bell notification icon. That way I can keep you up to date on everything that's happening on my channel and you won't miss a thing. So let's take a look at this Champion 35 petrol lawnmower model R434. I'm doing this for a friend actually. He's had this stood in his garage for three or four years and he's using an uh, electric one, which he doesn't like. And I asked him to bring it for me just to see if we could get this thing up and running. And I asked him what the problem was. And he said, the last time he used it, he said the blade snapped. So I'm presuming he's hit something with it. So let's take a look underneath. Oh yeah, the blades, there's half a blade missing there. But luckily for us, somehow, these uh, blade boss pins are still correctly situated. So we're gonna have to get this blade off. So let's take a quick look around this mower and just see what we've got. Let's take a look in this petrol tank. Yeah, that's all old. And basically, there's no holes or anything in it. It's all nice and solid. And it's just filthy, really. I'm quite tempted to actually just service this up and clean it up and give him it back just to show him actually what, what it can look like when it's done. So, let's get started. So just before I do any repairs, I'm just gonna go in my garage and get some petrol from here. Let's just actually see if this lawnmower actually runs. Right, I've just topped this up with petrol. So let's just see if it actually works. Anything could happen here, but I know the blade's on tight, even though half of it's missing. Primer's working, I can feel that, there's so much oil and everything around there, it's filthy. Right then. really doesn't feel good. I've just taken a look at this it pulls over really lumpy but you can tell here someone's already been in here there's different bolts through here there's one here one here you can see here as well it's almost someone's made a right mess really and I'm not sure that this recoil covers actually catching where it should so the first thing I'm going to do with this lawnmower is take this recoil cover off and let's take a look at what's going on there let's take a look at getting this recoil cover off then it's already slack These are all slack. Look at this spark plug lead here. Look how that's not in the gap. Can you see how there's a gap there? Could be something as simple as that. They have not got this recoil back on correctly as to why this mower won't actually run. And this one's a bit unusual. There's actually a screw in this side, so yeah, it's all really slack. Let's just take this recoil cover off and see what we've got. See here, it seems to be pulling all right. I'll unhook this in a minute, but everything looks all right there. I'm currently in the process of buying an impact wrench here as well. Just taking this nut off here so I can check these keywords. I've spent too many hours trying to wedge a piece of wood under here and stop the blade turning and actually get these off. So when I've saved up enough money, <laughs> probably from uh, repairing the next few mowers actually, I should have bought one years ago. When I've saved up enough money, I'm going to get one of these so I can just zip these off and check the keyway. But what's happened here is this has actually not been sat in the correct position. If you've watched my previous videos, I always say this needs to sit here. And if it doesn't, obviously you, you've a chance of breaking this cable. You can see there's actually little chunks out of it there. And of course this recoil cover's not sat on there right. And look at that there. Just spotted that. Can you see this here? There's actually a hole in there. Now this actual pipe here, this is where the carburetor sits on. This is where the rubber seals sit on the back of this carburetor. And you push it back onto the mower. Basically the fuel goes through here and down in here and it drops in in here and it actually ignites everything and everything starts working from this point so I'm not sure why there's a hole in there but that's certainly going to need looking at I need to first of all just see if I've got a spare here we go come with me oh you always have to reach over something to put this light on look at that there I've got a hoover there look you're Dyson with death did you like that? no Um. what am I doing? oh yeah oh yes I've got one of my new boxes here. This is why I can't find anything. I've tidied up. 
Let me see if I've got one. There's a blade there. Do you know, I wonder if that fits. That'd be good, I'll be trying that. Anyway, let's have a look in here some, in the mystery tub. I'm sure I'll have one of these. I feel sure I will. Take a look in this tub. Let me know if you see one. So I can't currently find one, but I've got a, I think I've got a spare engine on the back of the garage still. And I might be able to take one off there, but I guess my question is now is why has it got a hole in it? And once again it looks like I've undertaken Martin Butler's uh, worst lawnmower in the world challenge on his Retro Restore channel. Looks like I've entered without trying, so here we go. Wonder what other mysteries we might get. I'm just wondering how there's actually a hole in here and I can only imagine that this, this actually sits on here and where it drops down actually catches there and I wonder if it's just been touching against it and somehow it's been just pushed down so hard and tightened up somehow someone's broken it but that's my best guess because it's kind of there well, let's take this air filter box off and see what we've got oh yeah this is a good one so let's just check these springs are all moving I like filming these bits because you can sort of see firsthand what I'm seeing and I've not had a look at it first or anything I'll just lift it off and just see what's what as you can see in here it's absolutely filthy I think there's some sort of egg in there or something or a bead or something so let's whip this carburetor off and let's get it out of the way let's see what we can do now I'm actually doing this as a favour for a friend of mine he just said he needed a, a blade putting on it and obviously it's going to need a, a fair bit more work than that I just wanted to say if you've only just started repairing these for profit it doesn't do you any harm to do a favour for an, a friend or someone who needs something doing just to get started. It gets your name out there. And once people know that you start repairing these lawnmowers, then word of mouth spreads. And it's very likely that they'll suggest it to someone else. And somewhere along the line, you'll either make a sale or you'll pick up someone else's lawnmower to repair for profit. So, really good for experience. And it's kind of something you might thank yourself for in the future. Don't be afraid to do someone a favour, especially in the early days of repairing these. Get yourself some really good experience. Okay, I'm just going to take this carburetor off here. It comes off of the petrol tank. I've filmed this loads of times on my other videos. Take a look at them, but for now I'm just going to unbolt this. I always do this as well. I always start taking parts off and just put them somewhere. It's a really bad habit actually, so I've actually got something to put it in. I've actually got like a bowler. You see this? It's actually all most things on. A few things have gone there, but it's really handy to have actually. Yeah. Must really tidy these up. Just get yourself one of these balls, it's like got a magnet in it, and it's great because you can just put all these bits on it. You can actually turn it over, even drop it off something and stay together. So, okay, so I think the best way forward with this mode before I do anything is um, I'm just going to check that this actually spins free because when I was trying it before with a recoil cover on, it probably wasn't on correct, and this, this actual flywheel didn't spin. So, I'm just going to clamp this here. You see this here? And this moves this brake away. I'll take this cover off here. You can see the brake moving away. I want to see if this spins freely before I start doing any more repairs. So I've just tied this up at the top. I don't like to do that really, but sometimes you just need to... I see people running the lawnmower with it like that, so they ain't got to hold it, but it's there for a reason. Never sell one with that on, by the way. Make sure it's, uh, it's safe. But it does move this brake away here. And I can see here, it's spinning nice and freely. That was my concern at first. I thought something might be bent, but looking at the blade underneath when you turn it, it all looks fairly even for a blade in such a bad condition. So this spins freely, so that's my first worry gone. And everything feels like it's working okay there. So I'm just going to spray this up. I've actually got some spray, it's called gunk. I'm going to spray it with that and I'm going to blast this off with my compressor just so we can uh, get in a lot easier and see what we're doing. But to get this part off here, I'm going to actually have to remove this ignition coil, so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So to get under here to get this part off, I'm actually going to remove this ignition coil. This isn't difficult to do. Make sure you spark plugs out, so this is coming off anyway out of the way. It's always good practice to take that out. All I'm going to do here... I'm going to take these two screws out of here. Just take these out. Just set that there. That one just pops out. I'm going to try and leave these spring linkages together. It's not a problem because we know where they go. Take this other side out and I'll have to reset this ignition coil. I'm not sure if there's a video on my channel of how to do that. But I know I've filmed one. It's probably on the DVD actually. But anyway, that just comes out of the way like that. We'll keep these parts safe. What I've got to do here is just, if you just lift it up, there's actually a electrical contact there, you can actually just pull that off there 
and then this thing just completely moves out of the way as you can see I've got it in my hand and you just put it where you want and now we can get in under here and I'm just going to take this part off this one's, I've never seen this before it's very very rare I've had to take an ignition off uh, a lawnmower I think only once I've had to do it because the wire had broken I just replaced the whole thing but it's very rarely the uh, the ignition that's a fault on one of these I've never seen a hole in this either but now I've seen it obviously I can't leave it so let's just take this off and let's see if we've got another one of these and the engine I thought I had as a spare I must have used so I've kind of given up looking for a part just for the minute but I've just got my compressor and just uh, spray this with WD-40 and I've just given this a blast off and already you can see there's um, all, the, all the main parts that we need are going to work for this machine I think we'll get this running at some point I have to say I've never needed one of these and you're probably thinking we'll just patch it up and I may do actually, I may just fill it up but I want this to be right because this is actually where the fuel actually goes through, it actually pulls it through the carb here if you're not getting an even flow of fuel through here you're going to have problems with running so something as simple as this and of course there's, if there's a leak as well it's not going to run correctly so I think what I'm going to do instead if I have another good look round is I'm just going to lean this over here and I'm going to try and get this broken blade off the bottom what I usually do is just lean it here like this there's no petrol in it of course because the tank's off just make sure this oil cap's on here and as long as you don't tip it over too far you shouldn't get any oil coming out I just usually tip it like this that's all I normally do I can just get in uh, enough under there to hopefully get this blade off but I'm not sure how big a job it's going to be I actually need to cut my grass but I've uh, as you may know I've just had it turfed last year and I'm actually just letting it grow because I want to cut it and just leave it a bit longer so it's not that I can't be bothered if it looks a bit scruffy then apologies but there's uh, a reason behind it so at least I can lie on it and I can get this blade off hopefully get this blade off underneath this is another reason I want an impact wrench as well I've actually seen a Clark one and it's uh, it looks fairly powerful I think it's about £80 so I'm saving up to get that at the minute as I've said in previous videos you really don't need anything but a simple box of tools to get started and I've actually progressed to that Halfords 150 piece socket set and one thing I really really won't want to do without now is a, is a little air compressor although you can use cans of air duster for servicing the carb this little Wolf air compressor here it's a, a shoe 25 I think you pronounce it this has been brilliant this I can't remember how much I paid for it but just for doing little jobs like cleaning them parts off like I've just done it's invaluable I use it for so many different things it's it's really useful to have one of these as I said before make sure the spark plugs out obviously the petrol tanks off and it's all disconnected there's not even an ignition lead on this so let's just take a look at this you see here how bent it is actually as you turn it round against this deck you can see it's not catching nothing's nothing looks like it's bent apart from the blade so I'm really hoping I can get this off really easily but with an impact an impact tool on here I could, I, I could just put it on and zip it off like you know you see people do it sometimes I take these to a local car garage and luckily for me they'll just whip them off but I really do need to get my own so I'm going to spray this up with a bit of WD and wire brush this off because once you round these off you'll really struggle to get it out I think I've been lucky here just stop filming because I've, I've just actually got this socket on and I've got this undone straight away so this is going to come off which is great news for us what you must do as well when you take this if this blade adapter drops off it probably won't on this mower just make sure you don't lose the keyway off the back of this as well there we are this uh, this blades off and I'm going to take this blade adapter off as well I've shown you how to, oh, I was showing you how to do this on previous videos I'm going to get a three jar puller but uh, yeah <laughs> it's uh, it's off as you can see and what I'm looking at here I want to get this keyway out and I want to check that I can't actually believe that, that this blade adapter here the pins are on it and yet the blade is completely snapped I mean you must it must have hit something or I don't know what's I don't know what's happened there I've really never seen one like this but anyway luckily the blades off I want to get this keyway out of here and I'm going to make sure everything looks all right because if there's any marks in this that's not going to help and as I've discussed in top videos from comments I've had on my site as well it's really the top keyway that you want to be checking for the timing to make sure the mower runs okay but I'm going to whip that one out of there, I'm just going to get a screwdriver and poke this out I'm just going to check that as well and everything looks good with this one as well I'm just going to pop that one back in we'll put this blade adapter back on I've actually ordered a blade for this mower I just wanted to come back in and just check but I don't think this is the right one, it looks a bit narrow to me probably not right but just checking my luck sometimes you're in luck sometimes you're not this actually of course doesn't fit here I think this came off like an old B&Q one or something 
I wanted to check that just before I pop this back on. No point putting this back on the mower, I only risk it dropping off and losing this keyway, so I'll keep this with my spare parts till this blade arrives. I've just got one quick favour to ask actually, on my uh, YouTube page, if you look at my actual Repair and Lawnmowers for Profit page on YouTube, the home page, there's actually loads of other videos of mine on there, you can get to all the playlists and everything. I've actually listed my second channel on there. I actually have a second YouTube channel and you would be doing me an absolutely massive favour if you just clicked on there and subscribed for me. I'm just trying to get to a thousand subscribers and I'm, I think I'm about 30 or 40 short at the minute. So anybody who can be bothered to do that, I'd be grateful for that. Right, so this new blade's just arrived today in the post, so let's take a look at this. Move this to one side. And I'm never sure till I get the blade adapter and line it up that it's going to be the right one. Let's just have a look. It looks like we're set to go here. You can see here everything lines up nice as it should. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this blade back on this mower. And I've not found a part yet for this. So once again I'm probably just going to rob a part off my own machine which I've done so many times. And I'll find one uh, for spares and I'll keep the next one and put it on that. But I'm going to use the part of mine on this mower just so when I put it back together so I can get a, a proper reading of what this is running like. So what I mustn't forget is to put the keyway back in as well, which I've saved here. So I'm going to pop that keyway back in and we'll put this blade back on. So I've got this mower tipped again. Obviously it's not going to start on its own or do anything daft. I've got this plug lid removed. There's no tank on it or anything. And because I've got this handle clamped at the top, just want to show you one thing. Just to get the keyway back in, sometimes this crankshaft can be uh, quite uh, an awkward position. It says it's around the back and you're trying to fit this key in here. If you just turn this manually or if the, uh, the pull cord's attached, just put that on. You can actually move this to the position where you exactly where you want it and I always just put it to the top that way when you put the keyway in it's not going to keep dropping out on the floor when you're trying to put this blade adapter on I've got that sat there you can see here where the, the sort of cut out is I'm just going to line it up there I'm just going to push this back on so let's just put this blade back on making sure it's the right way up so the cut inside as you can see there is actually facing up just pop that on there making sure it's right. I'm just looking at the blade to make sure it's the right length as well, make sure there's a gap. Let's just put that in there. We'll just tighten this up evenly. You must make sure these are all set on these pins here that go through this blade adapter. That way you know it's set right and everything's in the right position. So I'm just going to tighten this up. And there we go, that blade is now back on this lawnmower. I'm just going to rotate this a few times. You can see here there's only a small gap actually between the lawnmower deck and actually this, this blade here. And one way to check that nothing's bent is just to turn the blade around and keep your eye on it all the way around. Make sure nothing's catching. Make sure nothing looks like it's moving off centre here as well. Just make sure this, uh, this isn't bent underneath. So to get this job actually done, I'm going to have to strip down my own lawnmower behind me. This serves me right really for not keeping enough spare parts. So I'm going to strip this down, I'm going to take this part off it and we're going to swap it onto this mower that I'm repairing. So, on your marks, get set, go. Here we go. So, I've got this other part off, but unfortunately for me, they're very slightly uh, different. You can see where the holes are on this, they're actually slightly different places, so it doesn't actually line up correctly if I'm trying to swap them over or if I'm trying to put this one on the mower. So, unfortunately for now, I can't actually swap this part over. So, what I've done for now is I've taped it up until I get another one that's coming in the post, which I was going to put on my own machine. So, for now, just to get the video done, just to try this mower, I've just taped this up, but I'm not going to leave it like that. I don't, I don't like that like that, but... I just want to get this mower back together and actually see if it's a runner. 
Okay, so I've just rebuilt my own mower as you can see. I'm just starting to put this part back on here. Just do me a favour in the comments section below. Just tell me what you would do. Would you buy another part or would you be happy with that like that? Because I'm going to put this back together and try it. I suppose you could argue if it's alright you could leave it. Personally, I'm going to buy a part. Um, when it comes I'm just going to swap it over. It'll only take me five minutes. But just out of interest, just post in the comments section what, what you would do with that. So I'm always interested to know what people think. So the next thing I need to do is reset this ignition on here. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. And I'm also going to post in the description a link to a video on this channel where it shows you in detailed information just how to do that job. I've got this coil in here. You can see here. I'll just drag this off this bench here. You can actually see. It's quite dirty that. I'm sure it won't cause too many problems. But I'm just going to clean up across here and just take some of this dirt off here. Just so you can get a really good connection with the magnet that's on the flywheel. We're going to get a good spark. So I'm just going to clean that up first before I put this back on. So I've just blown this off with the compressor. You can see here. Just how clean that's come up just for a couple of seconds. Once again the compressor comes in really handy. So what you need to do to put this ignition coil on is just look for a part on this flywheel where there's no magnets. If you look in here you can actually see these are actually magnets and this is what goes against the coil and actually forms a spark. So what you want to find is a part with no magnets and just put this at the front here. Otherwise as you're trying to set this ignition coil here it keeps grabbing it with the magnets. So you need to find a part that hasn't got the magnets on and just sit that at the front. The first thing this is quite important that you remember to do this is actually connect this wire up underneath here. You must do that before you start doing this. Otherwise obviously you'll be wondering why you've got no spark. You could easily forget to do that. So I'm just going to put this back together, put this governor flop assembly from. Before I back on, put that through there. I'm just tighten these up loosely. Must make sure this flap is moving as well. You don't want it stuck against this. Everything has to be out of the way. Just put that on through there and we'll just get these started. Just as a rough guide to setting this ignition coil here, just leave everything slack. You can see how it moves about there. Just get a piece of card. Normally get a bit of a greetings card or a playing card or something. Just slide it in the gap and make sure there's a gap. This is why you don't want the magnets attaching themselves to this because actually at the minute it moves freely and if the magnets were there it would be grabbing it all the time. So let's just get that there and we'll just lift this up evenly and we'll tighten up here just evenly at both sides. Just sort of loosely pushing it against this card. And all you're looking to do really is get an even gap around this ignition coil to the flywheel. So we'll just tighten them up. Make sure everything's still moving as it should when the springs are connected. What I'm going to do then is just slide this card out. Hello. And it, down the top here there's just a, a slight gap between this ignition coil and this flywheel. So I'm just going to put this petrol tank back on. You can see now it's uh, nice and tidy. Cleaned it up. I'm not, I've not drained any old fuel out of this yet. We still don't actually know if this lawnmower runs of course. So I'm just going to quickly put this back together and hopefully this flywheel will spin freely now, nothing's obstructing it and hopefully we'll get this lawnmower running. We'll just see actually what it does run like. Let's just put a few parts back in here and we'll try it. So if you remember back to the beginning of the video we had a problem, we pulled this over and it kind of felt like something was bent or whatever so with that just out of the way, just put that out of the way I just want to actually loosely put this on by hand now and I'm just going to pull this over slightly, just feel if it pulls the flywheel around yeah I'm not, obviously I'm not going to start it but I can feel it's pulling around as it should so let's lock this recoil cover back on and let's try and start this mower and of course make sure this ignition lead goes through this notch here and not actually under this recoil cover and cuts it in half. If you remember this recoil cover won't actually bolt it on correctly so I've got loads of bits off old mowers in this tub here so I'm going to select, in fact there's one there, I'm going to select the right ones for this and we'll put this recoil cover on properly. And just on the front there where someone's kind of bodged this up they've kind of split the recoil so I'm going to put a washer on there as well just to make sure it doesn't pull through. I'm getting quite excited now. I'm actually going to get to try this more in a minute and actually see if it runs. And uh, I think, hopefully, it will. But we don't even know what it runs like yet. So let's take it and let's try it. So eventually, I'm going to try and fire this mower up. I love this bit. I don't know why, it's just weird. But um, I'm hoping this is just going to start up first time and just be perfect. 
and then I can just give this more back. That would be lovely, but chances are it probably won't. Okay, so I've not put a plug in this or anything. I've just put some uh, fresh fuel in it, and also we've uh, put a blade on it, so we know that's all safe. So let's try this. I feel that's pulling over, although it didn't start, I can feel it's pulling over properly. We've got smoke, and I've explained this before, I've had this lawnmower tipped up as you know, so that's why that's happening. But if there was ever a classic example of a lawnmower that needs a new diaphragm and gasket, this is one. The revving up and down is just caused by poor fuel flow, and uh, that takes some saying. Poor fuel flow, yeah anyway. Um, and I'm going to service this, I'm going to take this off again now, put a new diaphragm and gasket in this, and hopefully it will run okay after that. So you really are getting to see first hand everything I've done with this mower. In fact, I'll show you something else as well. I'll just knelt on that. That hurt. Um, so I'm going to service this carburetor. I've shown this on loads of videos, far too many. So I'm either going to cut this bit when I video edit it, which you'll probably be glad about, or I might just put it on the fast forward speed or time lapse, as I think it's called. I'm just taking this diaphragm and gasket off. I'm going to blow this carburetor out and clean it off with carb spray. But what worries me slightly is the part that I've put back on. I know it's incorrect at the minute. I know there's a hole in it, even though it's been taped up. And all those, these are classic signs of it needing a diaphragm and gasket done. I won't be completely happy until that part's changed. Let's just fit a new diaphragm and gasket on here. Don't forget I was only doing this as a, a favour for someone who just wanted a blade putting on it, but obviously if it's not running right and I've got the, the correct bits to do it, I'll do it for him. As I say, if you, if you were doing this for the first time, or this was only the second one you'd done, what I would say is you've been really unlucky and you've had a bad start, but if you think of how much you'd have learnt, if you had a couple of moves to take apart and put back together, by now you'd, uh, you'd know most of the things you'd need to do to repair these for profit. Okay, so I've swapped that die from a gasket. Not changed any governor springs, in case you're wondering. And this is what the question I get. It must be the springs. It's not, it's the die from a gasket. So, um, wish me luck. All I've done is change the die from a gasket. Let's try this mower. And let's see if it's actually running right now with a proper blade on and everything. So it's a little bit lumpy as it's burning off this smoke. I'm just going to do this in sections. I'm also going to fit another spark plug. I'll just take a few minutes to burn this excess oil out of here. So while we're there, just change the plug. See if this comes, see if we can get this out of here. It came out easy. I wasn't expecting that. And don't worry, I won't burn my fingers. I'll just move that out of the way. I'll just put a new plug in as well, just for good measure. It's kind of getting a free service, this, isn't it? It's had the carburetor on a new plug. So the... Uh, all the tank cleaned out, new blade fitted on it. Should be good as new when it gets when it gets itself all this oil burnt off. It should be as good as new. Wow, just noticed something on this mower as well. Actually when it was running, the actual exhaust is loose as well. So I'm gonna have to take this guard off as well and just tighten this exhaust up. So this has kind of turned into a little bit of a battle. I didn't expect what we are getting there. It's running nice and even now, it's just the smoke and the exhaust is somehow loose I've never seen that before either so look at this this is actually uh, all loose so what I'm going to do is just bend these tabs out of the way you can see these little tabs here just 
bend them flat and you can actually get to these these bolts that go through here and I'm just going to tighten this back up not really sure why that's as slack as that but anyway it's not a job we'll just tighten it up here and that should be right see if you just tap them down at the sides here and actually see you can actually get here and tighten them up now So the smoke's eventually cleared on this mower. It's been running, I've run it for a good for sort of 10-15 minutes and just left it going to be honest with you. It's not raving up and down, it's not stalling and we're back to cutting grass with this mower. So I'm going to give it a really good tidy up and when the part comes there's a tiny little hole in that pipe that runs all the way through to where the valves are which I'm not happy about but for now I'm really happy that this machine actually runs, cuts grass, doesn't stall and I can actually use it to cut my own grass tonight and it's got a brand new blade on it as well. I've just been around the back of my garage again. Remember I had all them grass boxes? And the, uh, the, the person who gave me this said, I, I said I didn't need the grass box, but I found one. So what I'm going to do now, just to finish this video, is I'm just going to cut my own grass. Seeing as it's got a new blade on it, I might as well get some use out of it. Right, so let's give this a go. Just see if it's good enough to actually do what it's supposed to do. Looking forward to this, because it's got a new blade on. And I'm, I'm happy with that really, for a mower that sort of didn't look like it was going to have any more life left in it. And this new blade seems to be cutting my grass quite nice, I've just done it uh, quite long. But it's, um, it's collecting it up nicely in the box. I'm going to finish cutting the rest of this grass and I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up. I've eventually just got this part, the new part that had the hole in it, I've swapped that over. And I've given this a full service, I'm going to put a pull cord it's one more thing to do, I've done the oil. I'm going to give this back to my friend of mine and he's going to pay him for the blade. And I'm going to hope by word of mouth on this one he gets me a few more lawnmowers to repair. Or a few people that he might know getting rid of them as well. So as I've said earlier, in the early days, don't be afraid to do a favour for a few people. Just get yourself some experience. You see, this could have gone to the tip. Look at it, it's brilliant. It runs and cuts the tree. I've just cut my grass with it. It's absolutely fantastic. So if you like what you see here at Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit, please do me a favour and hit the subscribe button and click like on the video. If you tick the bell notification icon, that will keep you up to date on all new videos that I release as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again shortly. And any questions, post down below and I'll do my best to get back to them. Thanks very much. See you again very shortly.